Today on a chilly Boxing Day at Clarence Park, we're to, talking to St. City manager Ian Allenson after the Saints have drawn 2-2 with local rivals Hemel Hempstead Town in National League South. The fifth successive league game that the clubs have drawn 2-2. For much of it, Ian, uh, we didn't look like we were going to get a goal. We were struggling. We were a pale comparison to how we were Saturday, but the last half hour, we came good. Yeah, I think it took them to score for us to... Uh to wake herself up really. I was disappointed with us today for the first 45 minutes. I didn't think we moved the ball very quickly. We had lots of possession but it was very slow in what we did. I just felt it was a bit of a leftover from Saturday for the last 20 minutes where we controlled the game and we just passed it for fun on Saturday and we seemed to go out and try and do that in the first 45 minutes today and before we realised that you know it's a new game and you've got to go and start fresh and you've got to go and work hard. I didn't think we did that, though they had one or two set pieces in the first half and the ball fell from once or twice. I just felt it was a really, really poor game first half. I didn't think either team really looked like they were going to cause any problems, but you know we were second best from that side of it, but they never really opened us up. And then it took for them to score, really, and then it sort of opened the game up and it got quite um, open up in terms of the uh, the possession. And you know when it went one all, I felt we had sort of 10, 15 minutes there where we played some lovely stuff, moved it quick. Moved it forward, you know, split defences, and, and probably their kit was made two unbelievable saves. One from a deflection, what he's taken over the bar, and one from Rhys Morel Williams. Um, and we could have gone in front then, and then obviously they've gone and scored a game. Again, I felt, you know, we over, overplayed at the back again, took too long, give the ball away, and then they did a great little one two on the edge of the box, fellas rifled it in, and then we could have quite easily just folded there. But great character from the players to come back within 30 seconds, 50 seconds really, and, and get a second goal, which was. I'd say from our side of it, great character, and then you know we've had the sending off a couple of minutes from the end there, which has made it a little bit scary for the last sort of five or six minutes, where they could have even nicked another goal, you know, with us being one light. But fair, fair play to to us in terms of the way we showed character from coming be, from behind. But I didn't think we were really at the races today. Zane Banton sending off. Any complaints? I haven't really seen it, David. It was one of them. You know, sometimes when you launch yourself like that, I mean, fair play to their player. He got up straight away again. Again. You know, you have these rules and regulations, but their player wasn't hurt. Was it a dangerous challenge? I don't know. At the end of the day, I don't think it was. He never had to, he wasn't showing his studs. He's gone in with his feet down. But you, you, you know how the rules have changed. I watched, um, funny enough, I watched Arsenal versus um, Tottenham from 87 yesterday on BT Sport, and some of the challenges going in there was absolutely outstanding. Um, and all it was was a, was a talking to from the referee or a yellow card. So could he give a yellow card? I don't know. You've got an assessor in the stands here who question what they do and what they don't do. So he'd probably got marked down if he didn't send him off. So difficult because I think a yellow would have been enough and we could have just all carried on with the season what we're doing. And I felt Zane in the last sort of 15, 20 minutes come to life. He really caused him some problems. And uh, so it's a shame because he loses three games now and we lose a player. Um, it's just, good. And, and people don't understand these sort of things. If it's if it's a blatant red card and it's for dissent or retaliation or it's a really nasty challenge, then yeah, I think they deserve. But that wasn't a nasty challenge. He was just trying to block the ball. I'm sure you enjoyed watching yourself score in that game on the box yesterday. Ian. Well, I couldn't believe how ugly I was to be fair, first and foremost. But uh, no, it was one of them games. It was, as I say, and these some of the challenges that were going around there. And as I say, football's changed just lately. It's just, it's, it's, is it for the good? Sometimes I don't think it is when I see some of the football that was played in them. Uh, in that, that you know, in the 80s that was so, but that's football and referees. You know, they're given these duties to do now, and we have to question whether it's right or not. But we can't do anything about rules and regulations. But I think when people are being assessed, they seem to be uh, over officious at times. Getting back to us today, I felt we were going good positions around the edge of the box, but we lacked uh, decisiveness. Uh, but also, you've got to give credit to Hemel, they did a very good job on Rhys Morrell Williamson, two players on him all the time, and they stopped his runs. Yeah, and that's what we said on Saturday, wasn't it? At the end of the day, you know, we. we We've got some players out there on their day who are very, very good, and uh, you know they will cause teams problems. Um, and I just say fair credit to, to Hemel because they did double up, they stopped him playing. But I just felt, as I said to you there, we didn't move the ball quick enough today. And if we'd have moved it a lot bit quicker and sharper and went forward rather than side to side, we could have caused them more problems. But we didn't. Um, and I, and I just say I think everything was just a little bit too slow today, which was disappointing. Um, but you know we've got to take a correct from from the. The way the game ended up and going back, um, going behind on two occasions and coming back, I've got to give the players a lot of credit for that because you know five or six weeks ago we probably would have ended up losing the game. So keeps the unbeaten run going. I think that's seven games now, is it unbeaten? So it's another point going to where we need to get, and it's a local derby when we've not we've not got beat. So you know, if somebody <coughs> said to me you're going to take four points against Willstone and Hemel in two games, I'd have snapped their hands off for that at this stage of the season.
Two more goals for Sam Merson. He's on a good little run at the moment. The first one was a great finish. The second one, a fortunate deflection. And you, you said we got the goals quickly after they scored, and we needed them both times to get that lift. We did, and, and I thought Sam was really quiet. He's one of them players that I thought was really, really quiet. And you know, I was looking after an hour mark and maybe just substituting him just to bring somebody on with a little bit more sharpness because I felt maybe Saturday just took a little bit out of him. But um, when he got his two chances today, he's taken them great and. Uh, as I say, luckily enough, we didn't take him off at that stage because you know he's gone and got the two goals, which again is, is, is helpful from our point of view. But I just felt we had four or five players today not quite on their games, where on Saturday everybody was up for it. And in terms of being on their game, where today I think everyone was up for it, but one or two just took a little bit, maybe a little bit too much turkey and uh, maybe much too uh, in terms of the Christmas pudding because we didn't really look, I didn't think, sharp in terms of where we was in the last couple of weeks. Obviously, you're playing them again next, next week, New Year's Day. Do you change anything? I mean, usually we would see a, t a team and you think, right, we'll play in a certain way. But you've played them today, you've only got a short turn around. Do you change anything for next week? I think we've got one or two areas where today I think one or two players didn't really reach the level of of what we've done in the previous week. So in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, do I do I bring some fresh blood in? Um, but the, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult because that squad at the moment, that team, we've been very consistent in what we've played week in, week out, week in, week out for the last few weeks and we've, and we've not lost. Um, so sometimes you don't want to change it too much or tinker with it too much in case you just upset the balance slightly. But I just felt one or two players didn't really reach the, the level of performance that I've expected from them over the last couple of weeks, which is disappointing. But, you know, not everybody can play well every single week. So, you know, we have to accept that one or two players may be... Um, performance levels was a little bit lower than what it has been, but we'll have a look at that. We've got a, you know, a six-day break now, which is in terms of game-wise. I mean, we'll train this week as well, so and then we'll go there next Monday. But we know how tough it is, you know. At the end of the day, you're not playing a Hemel Empsey side; it's a poor side. You know, I think you see where they are in the league now. You know, they're in that top seven where we want to be, and they've had some really good results just lately. So it's going to be a tough, tough game. We know that they're a good side. They've got a side there that can score goals. They've got a side there that keep the ball for, for fun at times, pass it for well and you know you see with Jordan Parks today at times he controlled the game I felt today. We never really stopped him playing but his passes were going forward and his passes were hurting us, his passes were going to the front man's feet. As I said earlier our passes were side to side today and to be fair it was a little bit boring I felt it was. There was no, there was no real sharpness about us in trying to get the ball into areas and trying to get people behind their full backs or behind their centre halves. It was just in front of them. They were quite comfortable, and as soon as they won it back, they hit us on the counter attack. And you have to say, fair credit to Hemel. You know, they've done their homework on us. They've worked at a pattern that worked for them, and uh, they frustrated us. I felt first half, but second half, I felt we really got into the game at one on I felt we could have gone on and won it. Uh, and unfortunately, we've been done again by giving the ball away cheaply on our own on our own half. And uh, they've gone and punished us. But I say full credit to the boys because you know to come back from two one down with ten minutes to go. And they've got another goal and you know we're about to hang one in that last sort of five minutes because they put us under massive pressure as they've done in every game we've played. I mean I think we put them under pressure down there last year when we got the equaliser. They got the equaliser in the ninety third minute, you know, last year as well. So it's been good games at the end of the day. I felt, you know, first half it was gonna end up a nil nil and it would have been a really boring game because I felt the first half was quite boring. Any special sort of plans for the players on New Year's Eve? Have they got a curfew? Of, no, uh, listen, you have to trust them, Neil, really, at the end of the day. Um, we've got a three o'clock kickoff, I think, which is going to be, you know, they can all have a lay in bed if they want to. I'm not sure with some of our players, you know, whether they do um, go out drinking and celebrating. That's, that's down to them, but we'll talk to them about it in terms of what we expect. Because if we don't turn up and we're not right, then, you know, we'll get our backside smacked. Um, as we see last year against Oxford, where I felt you know the, the the way we turned up at Oxford, especially away on New Year's Day, we had players there. I felt had just come in, um, and that was a lot of the decisions I had to make later in the uh, in that month. So you know we've seen it all again today. You know if players don't prepare properly and don't look after themselves on the night before a game, then you don't you don't have a level performance which is going to be good enough to win a game of football. So we'll only tell that after the game on uh, on, on Monday. Neil asked about changes for next week there, Ian. As you already mentioned, you haven't got Zane Bantam for the next three games. Sean Lucian had his first run out for a little while. Is he now back to full fitness? Um, we will have um, Zane for next week because it's seven days after the event. So um, I, I'm not sure, and that's something I've had to... We just had a conversation with Sean there. We brought him on today, and I'm not sure if he's 100% fit. We need, to, we need to speak to him in the week. We need to get him to do some, some work. Um, because, as I say, I still think he's, he's, he's carrying his fire a little bit at the moment, but that's something we can look at over the 
next six days and make a decision when we should go to Hemel next Monday. Well, we shall reconvene then in 2018. <laughs> Thanks so much, Ian. So just a reminder, on January the 1st, New Year's Day, of course, we're over at Oxford Road, National League South, away to Hemel Hempstead Town, kick-off 3pm.